Got an officer fighting for his life. On the day marking 10 years since Michael Brown's death, a peaceful protest turns violent in Ferguson. A police officer seriously hurt trying to make an arrest. We want people to peacefully protest, but we damn sure ain't gonna allow you to destroy this city and we ain't gonna allow you to hurt none of these police officers. With the North County City once again in the national spotlight, people in the community now sounding off. It's not about what happens to us, it's how we respond to it. We want to thank you for joining us at 10. I'm Brent Solomon. Right now, Ferguson Police Officer Travis Brown is in critical condition. He just started with the department in January. The police chief tells us Officer Brown suffered a severe brain injury after a peaceful protest marking 10 years since Michael Brown's death turned violent overnight. As Travis Cummings reports, the chief now has a stern message. 10 years late, I got an officer fighting for his life. It's enough and I'm done with it. Ferguson Police Chief Troy Doyle emotional as he addresses a demonstration that turned destructive overnight outside the department on Friday. The same day Michael Brown was killed by a Ferguson police officer 10 years ago. We allowed the protesters to block our streets out here. Not only did we allow the protesters to block our street, we even provided a car um, on the uh, north end and I'm sorry, on the north end and on the south end so the protesters couldn't get hit by vehicles. But then the chief says protesters started to shake and break the department's fence. It was at that time I sent out an arrest team to make an arrest for destruction of property. Three officers were injured, one with severe brain damage. Police say they even stepped in to help one demonstrator with a seizure. Residents and others have their own recollection of the night. Never was there an order issued that it was an unlawful assembly. So police came out, rushed into a crowd, panic, it was melee. So I would definitely put that the onus on the injuries that happened last night was on the police department. One of the people that did get detained, when she went up with her camera, with her phone, she got pushed back. I got it on film. That agitated the situation. Doyle maintains they've done the work to be better. Everything that the activist community has advocated for, as far as body-worn cameras, implicit bias training, crisis intervention training, all this stuff, we have done all of this. What are we protesting? The chief wants the people his officers work for to show them and this community's history respect. We want people to peacefully protest, but we damn sure ain't gonna allow you to destroy this city and we ain't gonna allow you to hurt none of these police officers. Travis Cummings, five on your side. And tonight, five people are charged in last night's violent protest, among them Elijah Gant of East St. Louis. According to a probable cause statement, he was running from police to avoid arrest when Officer Brown stood in his path. Gant knocked Brown down, who fell and hit his head, causing that severe brain injury. Gant's being held on a $500,000 cash-only bond. Our coverage of the violent protest continues now with Annie Crawl. And Annie, how are people reacting to all of this? Brent, business owners tell us today they felt a call to action to try to elevate the Ferguson area after Michael Brown Jr.'s death. One owner says the protesters he met last night were there to reflect and remember Brown a decade later. There can always be one bad apple, two bad apples in a bunch. On Friday night, protesters gathered peacefully outside the Ferguson Police Department to mark 10 years since Michael Brown's death. Shortly before midnight, a group of protesters broke a fence, leading police to authorize arrests. That's when Officer Travis Brown was assaulted and seriously injured. Hive Cafe owner Maurice King says he sat down with some protesters who drew chalk messages on his doorstep. I had deep conversations with those individuals and I you can only speak from your personal uh, perception, but those individuals weren't, weren't troublemaker. Also on South Florissant, owners of Latte Lounge HG Eatery weren't sure what to expect on Friday night. We prayed over every business on the street that they would be protected because we know how things happened um, some years ago. It's about how, we, how we're responding to things. Courtney Harris attended Friday's Black Ball and Brown Memorial Walk. A friend of the Brown family, she supports Chosen for Change, founded by Michael Brown Sr. to help people process grief. Movements are movements. They are full of people that are passionate, that are angry, and that are still trying to find a place to show that anger and to get some type of response. There are different modes of protest and different modes of bringing awareness and attention. Chosen for Change is hosting a press conference on Monday at 11 a.m. and a community defense training starting at noon as part of the Youth Justice Day of Action. 
They want to focus on children growing up and feeling empowered as well as increasing tools to respond to trauma and conflict. Friends?